Now we will go through the terminations for the typical orange Dynalite Cat5 cable. We cut the slit at one end and strip the cable back. Locate the drawstring which is in between the outer sheath and foil shield wrapper and pull downwards and cut a 90mm snip out of the sheath and then basically cut away the outer sheath. Locate the shield drain wire and separate from the foil sheath. The drain wire is the shield termination. The foil that goes around it gives 100% shielding of the inner conductors. Again this increases the noise immunity of the network. Once you locate that on both of the cables, this is assuming that you have two cables, incoming and outgoing for the daisy chain configuration of the device you are fitting off, wrap your two shields together, use a cable tie to secure the two cables together or use some insulation tape. Twist our shields together. On both cables untwist the blue and the blue-white pairs. They are the ones that we really need to separate. The orange pair on the ingoing and outgoing cables are used together as are the green pairs. They carry the ground and the plus 12 signals. The reason for the doubling up of the cable is to get more copper conductivity and to minimise the voltage drop issues. Pair the wires accordingly together. Separate the blue and blue-white pair. Now wrap the blue-whites together and wrap the blues together. They will become our D-plus and D-minus terminations. Strip 10mm off the outer sheath of each of the individual conductors. Wrap them together and fold them back on themselves. Ensure with the shield that you slide some PVC or some heat shrink over it to give it some shielding. If you don't have that available, use some of the outer orange sheath which you have already cut off. Use that and slide that back over as a bit of cheap protection. Terminate each of the cables as shown, making sure there is no excess copper hanging out of the terminals. If we have a look from left to right, we should see the drain going into the shield terminal along with our PVC shielding. We should see the green and green-white with both our ingoing and outgoing cables going into the ground termination. The blue of each blue pair is going into the D+, the blue-white of each blue-white going off into our D-minus terminations, and the orange and orange-white combined together from each of our ingoing and outgoing cables going into the plus 12 connection. The auxiliary connection is generally not used in most applications. There are four typical terminations which can be done depending on the application. The three that are shown on the diagram, the complete termination is shown. Drain wire into the shield, green pairs into the ground, the blue of the blue pair into D+, the white of the blue pair into D-, the orange pair into plus 12, and the auxiliary terminal not used. With the Cat5, the spare pair is always not used. Just pull it back on itself and you can use it in future if it is required. If you're doing a data only termination, this is typical of a termination of devices such as touchscreens. The reason we do this is the drain on the plus 12 for the touchscreen is very, very high, so we don't want to pull the rest of the network down. We will drop off the orange pair, so effectively we just have the drain, the green pair into the ground the blue and the blue-white into D plus and D minus. The other termination that we see, if we have a twin active or a Dynet cable going out, is a power only termination where the data terminals aren't wired at all. One of the other considerations is if you were doing a tenancy floor where you have a loop cable going out, you might loop it from the DB out to all the field devices and bring it back on itself. If you do that, it is very important to do a power only termination on the return cable. Obviously, if you wire the blue cables back, you'll end up with a ring loop, so when you send a signal like a preset message out from a panel, it will keep looping around the network forever and give you all sorts of data faults. If you do wire the power connectors back in, you will help minimise any voltage drop, particularly good when you have high numbers of field panels or sensors. In a DMX512 termination, the shield goes into the ground termination, so we don't use the green pair. We just use the shield into the ground termination. We use the blue into the data plus 
and blue-white into the data minus. So these are all a typical example of how we would wire our equipment. So this is a typical example of how we would wire our equipment. In this application, we have a DTP100 touchscreen. We are showing how they would have a separate power supply with a power-only connection, a Dynat cable that loops through from our controller has a data-only connection, but the power cable feeding the touchscreen would also have a power-only connection. So effectively, there would be three cables going into the junction of that touchscreen. The Dynat in, the Dynat out, and then the power supply-only connection. Here is shown using a standard Dynat cable. Our preferred methodology is to use something like a 1.5mm TPS just to give you a bit more copper and to minimise voltage drop.